Okay, this is going to be a tutorial on how to make a texture roller for 3D printing using Blender. First thing we need to do is just delete everything because we have a camera, a light, and a cube here, and we don't need any lighting and we don't need any cameras. Uh, so just select it all, delete. Then we're going to go to Add Mesh Plane. The reason we want a plane instead of just a cylinder is a plane has its UVs pretty much already set up, whereas a cylinder uh, has to deal with its end caps. So now uh, we're going to turn this mesh plane into a cylinder. To do that, we need to add a empty. And I just do arrows. Um, and then you want to rotate those arrows by 90 degrees on the x-axis. That is in the object properties, rotation x, 90. Um, now we pretty much are done with anything involving the arrows. Click on your plane. We're going to go into edit mode by pressing tab. And then you right click on that, say subdivide. Bring up this little menu. Change the number of cuts to 10. Uh, and then we're going to do it again. Right click, subdivide, change the number of cuts to 10. We're done there. Go into object mode by pressing tab. We have our plane that's now denser selected. We're going to go to the modifiers panel. Click modifier, add modifier. And then we're going to do something called a simple deform. We don't want to twist it. We want to bend it. And we want to set the origin to the empty that we added. It's the, er the empty arrows. Now, as you can see, it's starting to curve. We don't want it to curve that direction. We want it to curve in the negative direction because this is the top of the plane. And the bottom of the plane down here doesn't exist as far as a 3D printer is concerned. It will appear transparent. So just scroll all the way down to negative 360, and we now have a cylinder. Um, however, the vertices in our cylinder are not connected. Um, but we want to first thing before we can deal with that, we need to apply this modifier. So you click the down caret click apply. Now the modifier doesn't exist anymore, but the the cylinder is a cylinder uh, more than a plane now, because when you go into edit mode, it's now a cylinder instead of a plane. Um, we don't need our arrow anymore, our empty. We can delete that too. Um, then we need to add some edge caps to our cylinder. So we go back into edit mode. And you go in here, you alt click on the edge to get all those vertices. Um, I typically do this in edge mode, so click here, you're in edge mode. Uh, you press E, which extrudes, uh, and then S to scale, E, S, E, S, E, S, and go back into vertex mode by clicking there. We right click on our vertices um, and say merge vertices at center. Um, and we're going to do that one more time where we go over here and then edge mode, ES, ES drag in, ES drag in, ES drag in, go back into vertice mode, right click merge vertices at center. Um, and now we we, we got to take care of those unconnected vertices. So press A to select all vertices, right click, and then we're going to go merge vertices by distance. This will remove 128 vertices that were not connected. The whole sphere is uh, the whole cylinder is now completely connected. Um, and we can start adding our displacement modifier pretty quick. But before we do that, we got to deal with uh, our UVs. So select that. We're going to press Control plus twice to expand the selection to there. 
we're going to go up here to UV editing. And now we have these are the selected UVs. We don't care about these. We want to basically merge them at center, grab it, get it off of the board. This is our image. It's now in a place that the image will no longer affect those UVs. We can go back to the layout. Um, and we're going to click on this, add modifier, and we go to displacement, displace modifier. And we don't want the mid-level to be 0.5, we just want it to be one. Um, we want to make sure the coordinates are set to UV. If the roller, if the texture roller looks strange, it's probably because this is not set to UV. Now that we have this, we can add uh, an image by clicking here. This just just click add new texture, um, and then go to the textures property panel, clicking here. Currently, we don't have an image, so we're going to click open. Um, this part does. I don't think this shows up on the uh, tutorial, but I'm selecting the image. Um, so texture cobblestone, I have this texture cobblestone stylized. It's a ping. Um, you can use whatever compatible image you have. Um, the thing about this image is it has to tile, meaning that if I like stack these around itself, it would all appear to be one seamless texture. You want the white to be the part that, uh, the white is high, the black is low, so like the mortar is black and the brick is white. Um, if you don't have an image that tiles, it will show up on this part of the mesh. It will, it just will look like there will be a weird seam. Um, so we go back to our modifier and the thing we need to change here is its strength because right now it is very it's too strong, so we go with negative 0 0.07 or something around there, and you'll get um, like the bricks. Like it actually might be too strong, but uh, adjust adjust your strength as needed based on what you're seeing, because images will you know vary. Um, next, we want to add another modifier, the subdivide surface modifier, which adds more geometry to our mesh. And this is computationally expensive. It will take uh, a few seconds, depending on how much geometry you got on your roller. But now our roller is pretty much done. Um, you can apply these modifiers by just saying apply, apply. And you got yourself a texture roller here. If uh, you were to bring this into your 3D slicing software right now, it would be incredibly small. So uh, I would change the scale from 1 to 10. And so that now it's a little bigger. Uh, but I would recommend scaling it in your slicing software more than scaling it in Blender. But the in Blender, a scale of one is very tiny compared to uh, any slicing software. Um, the other thing that you want to make sure of is that your mesh is indeed all, it should all be one whole mesh at this point. But if it's not, what you can do is go into here and then select all of the polygons by just pressing A, go over to Mesh, Normals, and say recalculate outside. Um, and so that's going to point all of the little squares outward instead of inward. Anything in here doesn't exist according to your 3D software. Um, polygons are not double sided in most situations. Um, in Blender, they are, but in mo like a game engine or a 3D software, if I was in here, it would all be see through, um, meaning it does like. It computationally doesn't make sense to the software. Um, it sh you shouldn't have to do that. Um, but if you bring in that 
if you bring in your stuff and it doesn't work in Lychee, when you bring it in, it turns red. Um, you can try to go back into Blender and recalculate the outside, and it should, uh, when you bring it into Lychee, it will, uh, it should be blue. Um, but yeah, that is how you create a texture roller in Blender. Um, yeah, happy printing. <laughs>